All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to be going over a training session that we did with Artin. Artin is a Malinois that has a history of having quite a bit of reactivity towards dogs. So we're doing a training session here where he has to show some impulse control. Now, Rust here, my dog, he is recovering from an injury, so he's pretty pent up, barking. Artun is doing well. Um, and I'm going to explain here in a moment why sometimes we don't see in training what the owner sees at home. So now I have Cinco, a very young dog, just turn a year old, very excitable. And I wanted Artun to see this. Now, so you can see Artun, he has a, a line kind of um, backed on him to a tree. This is just a safety. And then Liz, my wife, has a leash on him as well for additional control. So here you see Cinco getting all crazy on me, being a, the big puppy that he is. And this tends to trigger you know uh, the a uh, dog that is reactive here we have samara she is a female malinois she's in heat at this point and now we have the ball and you Wait. can see artin you know there's a little bit of impulse control there but not like i'm gonna kill that dog right now i have seen videos that the owners have shown me where the dog gets very intense and I have um, already talked to the owners, and I'm going to break it down on, on this video as well as to, again, why this happens. Now, at face value, it might look like, oh, well, you know, this dog's not being reactive because you've put a ton of pressure on the dog. And I would even believe the same thing if I saw the video with, with no context. But I can tell you, there hasn't really been a whole lot of hammering the dog. Um, you know, it's been like minor bits of uh, impulse control, addressing the impulse control, but not like crazy reactivity. So, yeah, this dog is basically going. There, There is a certain criteria, a certain set of expectations here versus at home. But again, you know, there are some impulse control things that we are addressing with Artin. You know, so he is getting training here. He is getting to see this young puppy. It's not young, he's like six months now. He did get to see a female in heat a moment ago. Did get to see a an, a seven year old Malinois just barking. He you know he is seeing a Chihuahua and, and this fourteen year old Catahoula right here in the center jacks so he's getting exposure to all dogs and some of these dogs are you know they're they're not um they're not soft passive dogs they're dogs that are that that have some kick in them we're doing some downs here he's now he's stretching his legs a little bit Also, we're doing something else throughout the day with him, which is we are exercising him quite a bit. Not to influence the training. That's not the purpose. Not that we're getting him tired to the point where he doesn't react. But we're just getting him plenty of exercise because we firmly believe in that. Especially a working dog needs to have plenty of mental and physical exercise. And we we live by that. So we... Even our boarding dogs, they're just doing boarding with us. So it's getting plenty of exercise throughout the day. So here doing a little bit of healing. And here in a moment, you're going to see a session where he's not really training. Not this one, but I'll show you the clip here in a moment. As you can see, there is there is not a, a ton of just charging all crazy. 
but I'm going to address this with the owners. I'm going to, and I have been, I'm going to address this with, uh, I'm going to make an update for sure. And obviously he's doing a good job. So he's getting paid with affection and he's getting paid with his food. We believe in feeding the dog through training, making him earn his food. This is a session where he's not actually training. He's not, I didn't tell him to do anything. I just showed him the puppy. Puppies just, you know, being a puppy, pottying. And now you're going to see the puppy being a little bit inappropriate here. Or a little bit inviting, not so much inappropriate. But Arton responded with that pretty well. You know, he's he's not, Arton is not close. suppressed. I'm not telling him you can't look at that dog. He's just choosing, right? He's got the puppy here again, carrying a dumbbell, running, being all inviting, all active. Again, we don't see, you know, this amount of reactivity that, that the owners see it doesn't mean that the owners are lying okay this this doesn't mean that i've seen this happen before the amount of intensity that a dog gives you is not always the same as the amount of intensity the dog gives the owners this leads a lot of dog trainers to point the fingers at the owners and say it's your fault you're doing this and the dog trainer then looks like they're the magician see the dog doesn't do it with me and then a lot of people go, wow, that's amazing. You you must have the touch. There's got to be something amazing about you. And no, the dog a lot of times goes, I don't know you. The criteria with you is different. And I know my owners, so I'm going to do it a certain way with my owners. I understand that happens as part of the equation. Some dogs don't care. Some dogs, I've worked with dogs that I take over and they do the same exact thing. And some dogs like Artin will do this. Right, he has shown me, he has shown us by staying with us that he has a little bit of a of an impulse control issue. Right? He he'll behave and he'll do well, but when the movement sort of exceeds the the amount of movement that he expects, he jumps, he goes for it. And we all we didn't always catch it on video, but in this video you did see it a little bit ago with Samara, the female in heat. So all we're doing here is we're understanding that that's part of the process. But one thing that I told the owners on a message, and I'm going to expand on this video too, is the the dog, okay, this particular dog, I know, okay, I know he has been successful at manipulating his environment in the past. And I know this because I made a video on this and I posted it on the YouTube channel. I, put, I posted a, a teaser video of me doing a crate training exercise and i posted the entire session of how i got him to go in the crate but i posted that long video and that how-to video on on the membership website so if you go to doctrineingismypassion.com uh, you'll see a tab there for the membership access so the session of how i got him to go in the crate after fighting me for a while it's on there without kicking his butt without putting a ton of treats in the crate but I'm going to tell you how I did it in this video. Basically, I told the dog, I am not, I am more stubborn than you are. And I can tell this dog by a bunch of different things he has done where he, he decides I am not doing this and he locks up. He just uses his weight, he uses his body to go, I'm not doing that. He doesn't do it violently. He doesn't do it aggressively. But I've seen this before in previous dogs that I've worked with. I've worked with a lot of dogs. And I've seen dogs that go, I know how to manipulate my environment. And using my body is one of those ways. And here's what happens. When the dog does that and they're successful with minor things, they go, I'm going to use my body and I'm going to manipulate my environment. Sometimes it's harmless. It seems like it's simple. And you're like, oh, it's not a big deal, right? It could be something as simple as the dog is laying on the couch. You want the dog to move, but they don't move. They just lock in. They just dead weight on the couch. And even if you try to move them, they will not move. 
They're not growling at you. They're not pushing you away. They're not showing you teeth, but they're just going, I know how to use my body. I'm not moving out of the couch. And then a lot of times the owners go, all right, okay, fine. You can stay there. I'm not saying that Arton does this. I don't know if he does this. Maybe he's never done this. I'm not, I'm not saying that this is the case with Arton, but I'm just telling you in general, there are dogs that will do things like that. Will they go, I'm not doing this. And there are little victories like that where they go, oh, I was successful. And then they learn, I can use my body to do all the things like that. I can, I can manipulate my environment. And I could tell this was the case with Arton because when I, you know, I invited him to go in his crate. I even put food in there the very first time, right? Like, hey, buddy, let's go in there. Coaxing him, being, you know, being like, hey, you know, we don't know each other. But he was never afraid of me. The moment I took over, the moment I took the leash from the owner, he was not aggressive with me. He was fine with me. He was perfectly okay with me. But when we were, when it came time to the crate, he was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And that's why I decided to make that video. I was like, I'm going to show uh, the audience here how, you know, how by just out stubborning the dog, not correcting him, not, you know, not choking him, not doing any crazy stuff, um, but also not baiting him with tons of food. I'm just going to let the dog know, dude, you might be stubborn and you might have been successful manipulating your environment, but guess what? I am stubborn too. And it goes through a process of, well, damn, this guy is stubborn. This 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 guy doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't give in, like, you know, my maybe my owners do. So when the dog is successful at manipulating his environment, the sky is the limit. Then they they apply it to different things, which is what I suspect has happened with him he's probably done it in subtle ways okay he's probably done it in subtle ways or maybe a little subtle way in which he manipulates his environment here and there little subtle way in which he you know he's able to to uh convince his owners to do or not do certain things and these subtle things add up we're very subtle to the point where the owner doesn't even see it um, again i'm not saying that's the case with art and i'm just talking in general but then when that happens is the dog goes, guess what? When we go for walks and I have, you know, this burst of energy because I'm excited and I'm a working dog and I see all the dogs, man, I want to charge. And guess what? I can use my body. I've used my body before and I'm able to control my environment. I'm going to do that. Okay. So, uh, and that, that could be contributing to the barrier or leash frustration which is a very common thing now when the guy you know when when Arton came to me now you know our, our first interaction and as we went along I didn't introduce him to dogs until two days after right like two days after maybe even three days after I got him and after you know we were you know, knowing each other and feeding, you know, feeding him and, and all kinds of good experiences, exercising, all of that. It wasn't until the second or third day that I finally was like, okay, dude, let's show you some dogs here and see what you do. But from day one, he was comfortable with me. He wasn't like uncomfortable with me. Sometimes dogs will not react the same way with a trainer because they're not entirely comfortable with the trainer. They're like, dude, I'm, I don't even know you. I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about you. So my reactivity issue is, kind of going to take a, a you know a back seat so that I can focus on you know on on the issue at hand which is I don't know you but Arton was not like that Arton from the beginning he was like hey dude I don't have a problem with you but I could see in different aspects of training when he was like dude I can use my body I can control my environment and I'm going to do it so that kind of hinted to me that um you know a dog able to do that He's definitely going to try to do it in other contexts like reactivity, going for walks. All I told him was, we're not, dude, that doesn't work with me. I, I am in control. I will make you do things that you don't want to do, a.k.a. going in the crate. Okay, not by forcing you into it, not by making you do it, but by simply outweighting you and outstubborning you. 
You know, I'm not going to add the pressure. I'm just going to be there and let you know I'm not quitting. You know, I'm not walking away from this. The, this is going to end one way. And I'm willing to wait 20, 30 minutes. I'm willing to do that. So finally, and we've done that a bunch in different contexts. And finally, he was like, well, damn, you're not quitting, are you? And I'm like, nope, are you? So finally, he goes, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, fight this the entire time. So, yeah. So, I'll, you know, I'll do that. Nothing harmful, nothing bad, right? Everything is like, dude, we're doing this. Like, for instance, the crate was one of them. The other one was the, 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 uh, the slap mill, the treadmill. Same thing. He was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And I was like, okay, well, not a big deal. You don't have to, but we're going to be here for a while. And we did that. And we did, you know, we did these little victories. Again, not fear related. You know, he wasn't like, oh my God, I'm going to die on this thing. It was just like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm like, okay, dude, not a big deal. Um, but uh, we're staying here. And all I wanted you to do at first is just put your front paws on the treadmill. That's it. He's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm like, okay, well, we'll just stay here, I guess. Then after trying and trying, finally goes, all right, I guess I'll put my front paws on that. Bingo. That's all I wanted. We're done. He didn't go on the treadmill like the first day. It took days, but we added, you know, these little victories one at a time. It was like front paws on the treadmill. That's all I'm asking for. And I'm going to outweigh you and out stubborn you. And I'm going to make sure that it's a good experience. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to hurt you or drag you into it. Um, but I'm also not walking away from this. And you're still going to eat. You're going to earn your food by doing it. So it's still a good experience, but I'm just not walking away from it. Right? Out stubborning the dog. And then it was okay, dude. Front paws are on it. Good. Now all front, all four paws on it. You know, once you made that reach. And he was like, yeah, I'm not doing I'll give. He was like, I'll give you my two paws. I'm not going to give you my rear paws. I'm like, okay. Well, then we'll just be here until that happens. You know, on and on and on. He's like, you're not quitting, are you? And I'm like, nope, not quitting. He's like, all right, fine. I'll give you a four pause and then I'm done. I'm like, dude, that's all I wanted. And then the next criteria was, um, all right, dude, just just stay there for a, for a few seconds. And so on and on. Now he loves that thing. Now he jumps on it on his own. He goes on it. He goes and goes and goes and goes. He's having a blast. You can tell. At first, you can see the early videos of him on the on the slap mill, and he looked a little bit like, oh, man, this is bullshit. I don't want to do this. But now, like, he jumps on it, and he's running. Like, he's running full speed. He's loving it because exercise is good. You know, he's running at a steady pace, and I even put it on an incline. So he's got a steady pace. He's really working out. He's getting those endorphins, which make him happy. Right, so all of this is happening, and now you know he's enjoying it. But the point of what I'm telling you is, I didn't give up. Right, I I out stubborn it, and out stubborning is a good strategy because you're telling the dog, I'm not gonna beat you. Okay, I'm not gonna correct the shit out of you, uh, but I'm also not gonna baby you and coddle because some dogs. You could give them hot dogs, meatballs, cheese, the best things that you can find. They could be nice and hungry, and they still will go, no, I'm not doing that. You know, screw your cheese, screw your meatballs. I am not doing that. And, you know, some dogs, some trainers are like, well, we're going to make him do it, and we're going to force him to do it, and, you know, all like crank and yank. And, yeah, some dogs will submit to that, but some dogs will go, I don't care. You can beat me all you want. I don't, I don't care. And some dogs will go, I'm going to bite you if you do that. Right? That's another strategy. But this other strategy that I'm very fond of is, dude, I'm not giving up. I'm going to stay here. And I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to stay there for a while. I've done sessions with other dogs where I'm like, dude, we're doing this. And the dog goes, well, you're going you're gonna to be waiting for a long time. And I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll wait. And I've done sessions that have lasted over an hour. And I'm willing to do it. You know, this is something I like doing. I like training dogs. I like seeing the breakthroughs. So I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll wait here with you for an hour. And I'm going to make sure that I don't quit. Somebody's going to quit here. It's not going to be me. And you see the dogs going, well, shit, you're not quitting. And then when finally they give me a bit of a breakthrough, I'm like, bingo, that's all I wanted. We're done. See, that's that wasn't so hard. And then the dog learns, and then they learn, and then they figure out, shit, Will does not quit. Will does not give up. 
And this sets the tone for a lot of other things in training. So if you have an aggressive dog, if I have a dog that is reactive, I'm, I'm telling the dog, dude, you know me. You know, we're, we're going to do it a certain way, and it's going to happen. Uh, and it's going to happen in a nice ethical way, you know, without, uh, you know, without, I, I don't I don't ever want to do something that is unsafe to the dog, right? And the dog just realized, well, yeah, yeah we'll, don't, we'll don't screw around, right? We're going to do it this way, and Will definitely has a track record of being stubborn. So, hell, we're going to do it. So that's what I'm going to communicate to the owners. The owners have access to this video. Obviously, this is on YouTube. And uh, and I'm letting the, the, the owners know when they get here to pick up the dog, we're going to do the same thing, right? We're going to be like, hey, this is how I want you to do it. We're going to do the follow-up, everything. I'm going to stay in contact with them. I'm going to check in on them. I want to make sure that they really get the message across um, because Arton is a good dog. He's a sweet boy. Um, and uh, and all, all it needs is this just needs to be a little bit of tweaking and the way the the way the criteria and the expectations are communicated between the owner and the dog all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video make sure you like and subscribe make sure you follow us on the social media platforms podcasts etc go to doctoringsmypassion.com if you want to get some crates there i have crates uh if you want to join the membership area i have a bunch of videos that are exclusive they're not on youtube they're exclusive there are a bunch of how-to videos on the membership area if you click on the tab for virtual training it's less than ten dollars a month and i update that regularly i'll see you guys on the next video